help customers enhance safety, improve efficiency, maintain readiness, and solve challenging problems. CAE offers civil aviation, military, and helicopter training services in more than 50 locations worldwide and trains approximately 100,000 crew members annually. Interglobe Enterprises is a leader in aviation and travel related services, growing the market for innovation and service leadership. Established in 1989 with headquarters in Burgaum, Interglobe has a network of 126 offices and 59 cities globally. We employ more than 14,000 professionals across various businesses, which includes aviation, hotels, ITBPO, airline representation, and travel distribution. I would now like to introduce Mr. Arun Mishra, Director General of DGCA Government of India. Mr. Mishra has been at the helm of DGCA for a little over one year, and DGCA is the regulatory body governing all safety aspects of civil aviation, including formulation of the framework, regulatory issues, and licensing of aviation companies, pilots, and aircraft engineers. Mr. Mishra is a 1986 batch West Bengal Cater Officer of the illustrious Indian Administrative Service. He previously served as a Joint Secretary in the Ministry of Civil Aviation, and in August 2009, he was sent to Montreal as the Indian representative to the ICAO. Mr. Mishra's team has been instrumental in helping us with timely commencement of the operations of this facility. We thank his entire team and welcome Mr. Mishra to today's function. We also have with us Mr. Mahan Bahon, President and Chief Executive Officer of CAE. Mr. Bahon has been with CAE since February 2005 and has more than 25 years of experience in the aerospace industry with several executive positions at renowned companies such as Canada Air and Bombardier. Mr. Pahan has been felicitated, felicitated numerous times and in 2011 was named Defense Executive of the Year by Canadian Defense Review. Please join me welcoming Mr. Pahan. <laughs> May I also take the opportunity to acknowledge the esteemed presence of the following distinguished guests. His Excellency Stuart Beck, the High Commissioner of Canada to India. and Mr. Srinivasan Dwarkana, Vice President at Airbus. It gives us great pleasure to welcome you all. At this time, I would like to invite Mr. Rahul Bhatia, Managing Director of Interglobe, to say a few words. Training history and at full capacity, it will be 
largest such facility in India. It is also, and I say this with great pleasure, the preferred airbus training center and can be used by all the airlines in this country as well as from neighboring countries to train the pilots. Individual pilots too can obtain their license here. And as Delhi is a large place for the pilot community, this fulfills the need for a simulator center in North India. Uh, the center already provides training to Indigo pilots and as of next month I'm told Go Air's pilots will also be trained at this facility. Thank you for people who are from Go Air. Thank you very much. Over time, we hope to encourage training of military pilots and also on the side we are currently exploring commencing courses for aircraft maintenance engineers. We currently have two full flight simulators that you can see right behind me that were dancing a few minutes ago, uh, which can replicate real time scenarios faced by pilots. Training is done using simulation from the very first day in the classroom. Technology is used to create a synthetic environment of real-time situations and extreme conditions such as implied fires, electrical failures, hazardous weather, engine failures and the like, so that pilots can experience the flight simulation under many different conditions. The simulation has to be so realistic that a veteran pilot would be able to trace on a level B simulator and then fly a real aircraft passengers on board. By 2017, we plan to introduce another four sims in the center. I think we have three based here and three on the other side where I think we are meeting for lunch. These sims are, are equipped with cutting edge features to fly the Airbus A320 aircraft and will be primarily used to train pilots and also help them renew their licenses. The simulators will also be continuously upgraded keep them in sync with the latest technology as and when it gets introduced by Airbus. One of the key objectives at Integral is to advance aviation in India and work collaboratively towards removing bottlenecks in its growth and equally importantly provide the best in class service to Indian and global customers. We would like to, we, we would like the customer to make use of this facility to meet their needs. Once the six SIMs are operational, the center will be able to train up to 5,000 pilots every year. Even with the two SIMs that are currently operational, we expect to train over 1,000 pilots over the next 12 months. There is also an acute shortage of flight engineers and technicians in our country. If you have to take the aviation, the Indian aviation sector to greater heights and make it truly world class, have to rapidly address such needs of the industry. India's aviation market, despite the recent turbulence as we read in the newspapers every day, has grown exponentially over the last decade. It is amongst the top nine in the world, and by 2020, India is expected to be the third largest civil aviation market globally, behind the United States of America and China. By then, India would process about 420 million passengers to its airports. And in the short run over the next five years, India is estimated to need more than 3,000 new commercial pilots. This represents a large and untapped market. Even if we put together all the airlines in the country, we have not been able to leverage even a small percentage of the potential of this market. India is a country of more than 1.2 billion people, but there are only less than, you would take less than 400 commercial airlines and aircraft in this country. This represents just one aircraft for every 3 million people. If we look at markets like the Philippines, Indonesia, Brazil, China, or even Russia, they have three to four times the aircraft penetration in comparison to India. And we are not even talking about the more mature markets like the United States of America or Western Europe or Australia. This means that for a market as large as India, over time we will need several thousand aircraft. The aviation sector currently accounts for 1.5% of India's GDP and represents about 1.7 million jobs. 
Currently, 80% of the passenger traffic is handled by the top 10 airports in India. The following 35 airports are in varying degrees of modernization. Recent studies of passenger traffic growth by the Center of Aviation points to the fact that current airport capacity will not be able to meet the growing demand over the next 10 to 12 years. The majority of airports in metropolitan cities will have to either expand or their expand their capacity significantly or develop alternate airports to handle this growth, traffic and growth, uh, growth and traffic side. Uh, in addition, most of the investment in infrastructure more recently has largely been in the bigger metro cities. Consequently, regions beyond the metro have had limited air transport penetration. We have a huge opportunity in front of us. Whether we look at it purely as a contribution to India's GDP, employment generation, tourism, improved connectivity between regions, or the multiplier effect it has on businesses across the country. India education is truly a promising and exciting space to be in. There are challenges to its growth, but these challenges are not insurmountable. It requires all the stakeholders to work collaboratively and create policies, infrastructure, and the right set of incentives to propel growth. It is even more important for us to collaborate to tie over this place in the otherwise strong and sustainable growth story of India. With facilities such as the center, our aim is to demonstrate that even amidst challenges, there are some things that we can do ourselves, especially if we come together and collaborate. Once again, thank you for being here. Your presence is truly really encouraging for a new look and CAE. With this, may I invite Mark to say a few words. Thank you once again.
of civil simulators in this country were built by CE. And of course, we do more than self simulators. In 2009, or 2008, as to say, we opened our first civil aviation training center in Bangalore. And it in itself was the first independent training center in India, in India, the first to earn approval as a type rating in training organization. And last year, at that center in Bangalore, we trained more than 1,500 pilots from five airlines. Also in Bangalore, we operate a helicopter training center in partnership with Hindustan Aeronautics Center. And it is equipped with two first helicopter simulators in India, including the indigenous helicopter built by Hindustan AGL. Also, in partnership with the government of India, we operate two ab initio flight schools. One in Gandhia and one in Raiva and Barely. We're really proud that SKI, with all that infrastructure, has created the capabilities in India to train pilots, men and women, boys and girls, with the dream of becoming an airline pilot. Taking that dream and becoming through our cadet schools to centers like this one here in Delhi to become the next aviation professionals support the role of civil aviation in this country. We're also very proud to partner very particularly with Interval in operating this six simulator base center to provide training for airlines in our region. As the Admiral Flying Admiral Proud was saying, the facility here provides wet and dry training where we provide instructors where Airlines will come with their own instructors, provide recurrent training, conversion training, and jet indoctrination training. At full capacity, we'll operate you know, capacity here for 5,000 aviation professionals training here every year. And again, I'll just repeat that because I think it's something that most people find surprising. The training that they will do here will not only prepare them to fly the commercial airlines that we fly in, but at least some of your flights, the first uh, flight of the cap of one of the two pilots, probably not the captain, will be their first flight in the aircraft. Probably not yours, but theirs. One of the two won't be the first, just to reassure you. <laughs> but we're very proud of the fact that all of that training done in a simulator and they're very ready to conduct that flight safely and be able to handle any eventuality that could ever occur in the aircraft during the safety of the flight public. Again, we're very, again, proud to continue growing our presence in this vibrant country. Our 300 employees here located in India are honored to you daily of Indian Aviation. But finally, on behalf of all of us in here at CE, certainly myself personally, I want to thank you, Raul, for the confidence that you've demonstrated in our company, the kind words again that you have espoused to us. And we will not let you down. We'll support it. We'll grow this partnership together. Thanks for everyone who's contributed through your hard work and is dedicated to build this outstanding and now, let's conclude. It is my pleasure to invite Mr. Arul Mishra, Director General of DACA, to say the word. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's excellent to be here. Rahul Matia, Mark Kerry. It's indeed a privilege to be a part of the ceremony. Uh, I would like to first congratulate everyone who has been involved in this project. Uh, right from the conception to the design and construction. And in such a short time, we have such an excellent facility, which is supposed to be the place.
biggest in the country. Uh, I'm sure this facility will add a lot to the safety of Indian aviation. My best wishes to the success of this venture. I would like to uh, mention the contribution of CAE. In India, CAE in aviation training are synonymous. As Mark mentioned, that 75% of our simulated facilities are with CAE, thanks to CAE. And we have had very successful uh, ventures, government has had with CAE, in Gordia and Library, as well as HAL and hats off. So we really look forward to working with CAE and uh, doing this. Before I uh, say further, I would just like to congratulate the person who has conceived this dancing simulator show. It's really innovative and good. And, uh, I, I, I feel that, you know, uh, very soon someone from Bollywood is going to catch this idea. <laughs> and uh, with that, I think Rahul, you have uh, another revenue stream coming. <laughs> so, coming back to Intergro, uh, Intergro and specifically Indigo has changed the face of aviation in India and it has provided an excellent facility for on-time performance, low fares and uh, really pushed this aviation market, this the place where we are. And we are going, Rahul has mentioned the figures, we have a huge potential. And what worries me now at this stage is uh, one aspect of aviation which we are not really putting our heart to. Although we have developed a world class infrastructure, we have very good airports now. And uh, we have very excellent world class air navigation facilities. But where we are lacking is development of manpower, the next generation of aviation professionals. That's where uh, we are not putting our mind to and that's what's getting us worried. We have developed institutes, institutions like this for the pilot training for the engineers, AMPs, and then only we can really sustain this so-called Indian growth story. At present, we know we are facing a huge problem. If we talk specifically of uh, experienced train pilots, in fact, some years back, we used to have this uh, war within the airlines about affairs. Now I see there is a war with the airlines about the wages of pilots. So this, I think, is totally unsustainable, and we need to get together the government, the industry, and find a sustainable solution to this. Otherwise, we will just keep on uh, raising the cost of their lives, and no one's benefit. So, uh, this is one area where we need to work. Uh, regarding uh, the standalone and training centers, <laughs> we have some issues. As a regulator, I can tell you that we have not been able to uh, formulate our rules and policies. Uh, which would enable these institutions to function efficiently. So we are in the process of working with the industry uh, to evolve the best international practices which are everywhere so that uh, these centers can function as well as they are functioning as well in the world. With these words, I would again like to congratulate everyone. I'm happy to be here and the DTC India would extend its full support to this center so that it develops its full footage. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the speakers. May I now request Mr. Pamo, Mr. Mishra, Mr. Barkana, and Mr. Patel to come to the stage for a brief photo session. <laughs> 